Welcome everyone. Uh, we're going to race through the charts and race through the whole sort of trade um, trade round table just because it's obviously bank holiday for most of us, apart from the US. So um, let's keep it short and sweet and really look at the key aspects. Well, if I was producing a, a video on over the weekend on Saturday or Sunday, I would have said it looks very bearish. Prepare to you know, short a pullback on the Dow, and uh, you know, let's see if we can break the low. And we've had some not very much data, but what data has come through has been very bullish, and the markets have responded really well. So the Dow's up 300 points, incredible. Right, this time last week, I was talking about how it's typical in this time of the year to yeah, let's see a pullback, uh, and then typically as you get into you know, into April and, and May, you, you do tend to get a bullish market. If you look at 20-year averages and 20-year cycles. Anyway, let's just get right down to the nitty-gritty. So, data. So we've had some really strong Spanish jobs data. Um, U.S. services data was higher than expected. And tomorrow, so overnight we've got the Aussie retail sales and Aussie rates. Uh, I'll just show you a little quick 35 points. I've just nicked off the pound Aussie dollar in a minute. I didn't even intend to trade, but it was just a bit of a gift, so I just grabbed it. Um, here they're expecting rates to stay the same. Some are looking for a rate cut. At the end of the year, there's a possibility we could be 50 basis points under this, but we'll see. That's some of the projections, and you can see that in the pricing of the Aussie dollar. You don't even have to look at this. Uh, you know, the markets have been pricing in for the rate cuts. UK services expect to be better tomorrow. Um, job openings better. So despite that shock week non-farm payroll on Friday, at the moment the markets are good. And what we have seen in the past is a strong opening to Monday only for them to sell into it on on Tuesday and the rest of the week. So obviously I'm on a high alert for that. It's basically just a very volatile market. Now I'm very interested in this. On Wednesday, Japanese current account, if that current account uh, is any weaker than that, that could upset the markets because the Japanese Bank of Japan have committed so much to easing, any trip up in the current account could trip up the apple cart and create um, a repatriation of the yen. So for the appetite for risk to, to stay on top, as we've seen today, this current account needs to be good. And then we've got policy statements. Um, pretty slow day on Wednesday. Uh, Thursday, Bank of Japan reports. UK rates. Nobody's expecting any change on that front at this stage, but uh, you never know. Weekly jobs expected to be slightly worse, particularly following non-farm payroll. On Friday, Chinese inflation, UK manufacturing production, manufacturing production expected to be good. So, so all the data is expected from the pound this week is expected to be good. Um, we're certainly seeing uh, some buying of the pound into this, this Monday. So we'll have a look at that. Friday is very quiet for the US. We've just got a speaker at 1.30 and import price is very, very quiet. Okay, enough of that. Now let's look at the charts and let's pull up the weekly because I haven't actually looked at the weekly in great detail now. So now's my chance. Daily on the right, weekly just coming up on the left in any second now. So 
So you can see really fantastic couple of weeks on this pound Aussie dollar. A hammer, a push into this, back into this area, and a swift buying in the early part of the week. So the massive the daily trend line, I've got the trend line coming down from the highs on September 2001 to the second retest of the high, August 2002. We cut through it in 08 before the big drop. But here we are in this, I marked this fib zone in this grey area because the hammer last week, uh, two weeks back, took us into this. So that, that weekly is very bullish. Down to the daily, uh, after that drop on, uh, when was that, Thursday, I think? Uh, sorry, Friday. A sharp drop on Friday, which is bought. Uh, we look as if we are coming up. And the reason why I took a quick 35 points is uh, if you look at this 60 minute chart uh, we had a hammer you can see my 69 pounds 80 profit up there uh, see this hammer here I've marked off that range and on the last hour up till at 6 o'clock UK time we held it and then we saw a big push into that bar there. What I want to do is I want to buy a pullback at 550. I'm not sure. It, it may not get. This is the danger of trading like this because you may not get it. But uh, you know, it's. Um, it, I thought that that 35 points is a bit of a gift, so I could just grabbed it and walked walked away. I hadn't had a chance to really analyze my charts, which uh, is why I I grabbed it quickly. The three hour we're just coming in where this is actually. Uh, potential, this is quite a pivotal area in the three hour, we had a bearish bar, we're just pulling up into the FIB area here, FIB level, but uh, it's been such a bullish chart, uh, just buy any pullback on this one, and on the whole, that's work. that's worked, as long as you get a nice 15 minute low stochastic and RSI, you can, most of the time over the last two weeks in particular, you've made good money. Okay, so back, let's whiz through the main weekly charts. I don't want to go through all of them. I just want to look at the main ones I've been watching. Pound, yen. So don't forget what we did. Now, that is a very flat potential bullish doji sitting inside the previous week. So this week's range is going to be crucial. So... With incredibly range bound in this, as, you can, as the week, as the daily is showing you, we've been in this box since the 24th of March. We were boxed up here, and we've not opened and closed. This bar here on the 18th was the FOMC day. We've not opened and closed under 177, which is the low of that FOMC day. But we've got all this congestion above, so for this to really crank itself up. Ideally, I'd like a, a nice deeper pullback, but at the moment, that's, that's looking like a good close here. So, I mean, so tomorrow, if we hold up here overnight, particularly after the Aussie rates, I would try and buy a pullback around you know, the 750, 7, 800 area. I think that is a chart that is looking as if we could come out of this range to the upside particularly based on this initial Monday price action. Pound Aussie, uh, sorry, Pound US, sorry. Just waiting for that to come through. Pound US, hammer last week. I got on that just above that, this FIB 149. Um, rubbish price action so far. We've hit the monthly pivot up here. On the three hour chart, it's looking like um, 14850. You know, a retest down here. Is the potential for that one.
so we're pretty flat on that one, but it's still selling at the highs. Let me drag the three hour over because my three hour chart actually looks pretty neat. Uh, you can see um, 55, 100, 200 moving day average. Monthly pivots and fibs on there. So we crashed into the fibs at 970. And three, four hours later, we are just creeping down. So if we come and touch 148.50 area down here and hold, which is where we've got a lot of support and a retest of a hammer. Uh, that would be a great place to get in. RSI stochastic have been high as we as we struck that um, fib area. Well, that three hour is looking pretty neat. Demonstrate, you know, it demonstrates a very very tight area. I think the time for the pound to break out has, has arrived. If that Dow can hold up, I think we could see some recovery. I mean, the we've had a, had a, had a lot of selling. So we sold off from uh, July last year. We had two ways down. One, two, three. So we have an A wave correction here. And just as the euro has come up quite a lot over the last couple of weeks, I think it's time this pound came up. Um, I mean, if this pound is to, if you look at the wave to the upside here, that was quite significant. I mean, you know, we closed above 153.40 for a couple of weeks before dropping back down. It's, it's a very sideways chart, very small range over the last couple of weeks, as demonstrated by the daily. So... If it's a bearish consolidation, we're going to come in contact with that with 150.75 and then just get another leg down. So in the meantime, I'm, I'm cautiously bullish, but I'm just taking into account that it's we are under the 50 EMA on the daily. Therefore, we must expect further downside and a retest of the fade of that daily 50 is more likely. So technically that, let's get something straight here, technically that is bearish. That's a bearish consolidation. Let's get something straight. Okay. Um, enough of the pound. Let's look at the euro. Go through the euro pairs. Uh, you can see so three weeks of higher closes on this euro. That's the first time we've had three higher weeks for, we had, th uh, I was going to say here in February, but you can't really count that because we were absolutely flat on the uh, first week in Feb. But that's three higher closes up till now. So we could see a full test of 112 or 11150 up there. Well, you can see the RSI, we had three big bouts to the downside. Stochastics are still under that main line. So although it's a bounce, it, it's pretty weak. We're, the RSI on the daily is only just popping its head, rearing its head up. So if we start cracking under 108.80, 100 points where we are now, that is toast. I mean, three weeks higher closes is probably about its limit. I mean, if you look back over here, one, two, three, didn't get, got some, that was five weeks up here in December 13, uh, five weeks here in January last year. Otherwise, we've only tended to have two 
blue bars before we get um, further selling. But that was pretty, that was quite a strong Spanish data, so it could be the markets want to drag that higher. I think while it's doing this, um, again, like, like the pound, if we come up here to the daily 50, and um, um, we could just sell at 110.75, a full fib level, which picks up the resistance here on January, late January, would be 111.25. So that that's more, that's that's the area I'd watch for. I think we'll overshoot the 50 and then potentially roll over. Euro yen. Uh, that's that's actually looking quite bullish. That's a hammer of this uh, fib support from the low mid January. We overshot the, the weekly 200, and we popped our head back with a hammer on that support and the date and the weekly 200. So that that looks as if that could stretch its legs up to. Uh, 1, 1, 3, 1, 1, uh, daily tells a different story. The daily is suggesting I mark this reversal bar here on March 5th because reversal bars tend to get retested. That will be a, a fade of the 50 MA. So 1, 1, 3 is the target area for a short on that one, according to the daily. So a couple hundred, 200, 225 points up. And that is going to hit a lot of congestion. I wouldn't go long. Um, I'm going to, if anything, I would go long the pound pairs and trade them up to resistance, which is what the pound yen and the pound Aussie have been doing so far today. Uh, let's have a look at the Aussie US because the, the gold has gapped up. The goal went right against my um, prediction, and the gold's gapped up. So this Aussie is really, really struggling. Um, because the market has seen a rate reduction and it is, has priced in further rate reductions. So if we break this low here, 75.30, I think we're going to see 71, 50, 70 quite quickly. Hence the reason why the pound Aussie dollar has been so strong, has been picking up so well. But our rate decision tonight is going to be telling. And if you're not, if you haven't got a buffer when, as you go into a rate dis, uh, decision, We'll wait until at least 24 to 48 hours after. So you, A, you know where the market's going to go, and B, you can get your order in for a pullback in whatever direction that market goes to. Ideally, obviously, you want to be in this, um, building a buffer. Uh, you can see on the weekly chart, we were struggling up here, 94, 95. Um, and then after first week of September, all pullbacks have been shorted. But the daily is flat with a lot of localized support. Okay, uh, gold has gapped up. So one of the reasons why I was bullish and happy to go buy a pullback in the pound Aussie dollar is because I would expect this markets generally like to close gaps. And I don't see why gold should be any different. So at some stage, we are going to see 1,200. Uh, we may only just come back to 1,207, 1,205 is, a, is a, a technical gap close. And we're currently 1,218. Um, but we could obviously, 1,200 is the most obvious gap down there. So three weeks of buying. 
and if this weekly suggesting we could come up to 1250 at which point if we see strength in the dollar at that stage we could roll over I mean, at the moment judging by if you go by non-farm payroll alone the um, that was a pretty weak figure and we had this last year where the US had a severe winter and the first three to six months of the year saw some very sluggish data with a pickup in the second half of the year so you could see a weak dollar uh, on the back of that weak non-farm payroll and until we get some stronger data uh, I would expect to see an increase in the gold and a potential move up in the pound US and the euro US but obviously we've got congestion areas above us since we've been talking pound yen just been creeping up a little bit and the Dow's been creeping up we'll look at the Dow in a minute um, so we've looked at gold, let's have a look at oil. Yeah, I had this area on the weekly oil mapped out. So we've had three weeks of higher closes and a fantastic start to the week. This is an April contract. Actually, this contract closes uh, in a couple of weeks. So I think we're seeing um, some heavy buyers stepping in just before it get, we get too close to the contract close. So 54, 20, 55, we're 52 now is a potential target on that one. That, that's a beautiful daily chart. Hammer, we were flat on Friday, very, very flat. And this morning we've opened at 49.70 and run 230 points. So that that's is it swing tradable? Yeah, you, but the risk reward ratio at the moment is is pretty poor. There's a nice hammer down there on the 17th of March. Uh, if you see 50.50. That could be a good area for a pullback. So I'll make another 50-50 to see if we can get a drop. Uh, but 54-55 is top of the box. It's a pretty big, I mean, really, the, let me tie this up. The box is here. So we're sitting on 55 through December, popped in it on 29th of December, and we stayed in this box ever since. So pullbacks have got close to the top of the box of 54.30, retested the low of the box on March 17, and here we are coming out the other side. We're above the 50 MA, looking as if that could push higher. I still say that the I think the the mean average on oil is somewhere around the 65 75 area which would put it if I, if I fib 75 uh, you can see the fibs coincide with the top of the box surprise surprise and a push towards the 2 and EMA would get close to the top of the zone at 6280. Uh, in terms of Elliot, we have one, two, three, um, A, B, C, D, and now we're sort of starting again basically, one, so we're in the process of two, 
and if we really can reverse down here, if this really is a, if we are finished with the selling, then we've got to close above 55, and then we're going to see 60, 65 fairly quickly, I think. Okay, so oil, that, that's a nice daily chart. Um, and the fibs look good. Just if you are going to buy oil, just be patient and wait for a dip. You may not get one. So therefore, don't chase the market because the resistance levels, congestion areas are so relatively close now. <clears throat> indices, when we look at indices, and we'll finish up. Look at a couple of stocks I like as well. And this is the Dow just coming up. Right, you can see, had I done a video over the weekend, I would have been talking about um, how we'd close, just narrowly close under this trend line. Kept inside the box though. So if you go by the box alone, that's a classic box play. Um, I would have been talking about the fact we were between the 50 and the 200, and 50 and 200 are very close. So if, now I give this another, a couple of days, I would look for a pullback to 750. If you get a pullback to 750, assuming we close up here in the next hour and a half, close up here in the hour and a half, at some stage in the next 48 hours, a pullback to 750 is a buy to see if we can start to push for these higher levels. I say 750 because at the top of the box and because you need the best possible price if you're going to try and hold that for a few days into the back of the week uh, to see a pullback. But on the face of it, if, we, if I squeeze back from that, that's potentially a very bullish chart. Uh, the last time we did, had a pattern like this was here, sold off late December got bought first week in Feb with a very, very similar chart pattern. Three ways for the downside, which to me is Elliot. Created a, uh, a funnel and burst out. And at the moment, that's exactly what we're doing here. So let's see where we close. Um, I think the real, the, what the market, or what could really shake this market up is um, a problem, problem with the Greek, um, Greeks and the Euro and China. At the moment there's lots of talk of China really sort of hitting the skids. but the charts are not saying that. So this is the China 50 index. If we close above that, we are toast. If we close underneath that, sorry, if we close above that, we are off to the races. Start closing at under 12,000, and that's toast. Any questions, pop punch them in the box. Otherwise, I'm just going to look at a couple of stocks I like. And stocks are going to become, uh, the stock club is going to be big. Uh, I've got a very ambitious plan for the stock club. And we will be looking at uh, specialist stocks videos and the stock club scan which we're going to be doing on a Friday. I'm going to be pre preparing for the following week on a Friday for stocks. Right, uh, stocks, 
Let me just call up a stock. No, this is one that I talked about last year. Where are we? Let me find it. Uh, I'm trying to look in my list. So let me. Here we go. Talked about this when this was bottoming. It's done really well for me. Yeah, you can see where I marked it off on the weekly. I was talking about this chart pattern down here at 78. Uh, these guys got very, took a big hit in 0708 on the uh, commodity market, the soft commodity market, because um, they're, they're brokers uh, that came out of it, uh, fought their way out of it. A big push up in February last year, pull back in May, typical. Uh, we, but we look how we performed in the summer. In the doldrums, this thing was just getting bought. And here we are, so we're from 78 to 210, close to 210, with the potential to keep, keep going. That's a very, very bullish daily. And you don't see many Forex charts like that, which is why... I would recommend that you, if you're not actively trading stocks, you need to consider, at the very least consider it. Tate and Lyle. There we go. Um, right, the one I like the look of is... Uh, let me... Grab it. Okay, I have to punch it in. I can't find find it. Uh, it's Facebook. Now I'm a little late to the party. A little a little late calling this because it's had a good day already. Uh, it's up from a low of 81 to 8280. But hopefully, give it a couple of days, see if we can at least pull back to 8175 would be a good price to get in. I, I think this is we had a nice run up here from March. And this is so this 8115, this 81 area is massive support. And I would look for that to punch close to 100. I think that's going to 100. So I would, um, even if it doesn't get to 100, you've got a good probability of a run in that. So I like Facebook a lot. Uh, what else was I looking at? There's a, quick, there's a lot of green all over the charts. Let's have a look. Um, Broadcom. Yeah. Uh, we're trading under the 50 A. So we've got a high of 46.21. Got resistance up there. And we've got that support coming across. Yeah, I like this one. Broadcom, BRCM. Um, if you buy 42, 45, this time of year you've got to watch out where the um, results dates are because they're coming to results season. But if we start holding here, that, that's a beautiful chart pattern. That's in an apex. So if we start later in the month coming out of 46.40, that could, that could fly. I just need to do some work to research into when they um, offer up results. Weekly fibs. Uh, look at that weekly pullback uh, last October to 36. So in recent weeks that would have gone up from 36 to 46. Not bad, not bad. Okay, uh, it's holiday season, it's holiday today in the UK, so I'm going to finish up now. Uh, any questions before I stop the recording?
Okay, I'll stop the recording.